स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया the key uh, thing that one needs to prove is really well definedness okay the key point here is that uh, this definition is well defined and why does one need to worry about that because uh, we are picking representatives from these classes w1 and w2 if so, so it's not a priori clear that suppose i changed my representative so here's what we will need to show what if i pick different representatives so if x1 is another representative it belongs to this equivalence class okay and i pick a different representative x2 from the equivalence class w2 okay then so what does that mean i e i have instead of taking w1 as my representative i'm thinking of x1 as my representative of that class and similarly okay so i'm i'm changing my representative then so suppose i do this then i need to show that my right hand side will be the same answer whether i do w1 star w2 and take the concatenation or i take x1 star x2 and concatenate and take their concatenation the answers should be the same so okay then um we need okay we must show that x1 star x2 the equivalence class is the same answer as what you would get if you took w1 star w2 okay so this is what showing well definedness means okay so let's prove this again it it comes about from the special way in which the equivalence class or the equivalence relation was defined so observe what are we given we are given that x1 and w1 are equivalent to each other so let's prove this given what's given is the following these two are equivalent and what we need to prove is that the concatenations are equivalent x1 star x2 is equivalent to w1 star w2 okay so what is equivalent mean it means there is a chain starting with w1 ending at x1 in which each intermediate step is obtained from the preceding one by an application of a basic rewriting rule okay so let's uh, write that down so step 1 i start at w1 okay and i use my basic rewriting rule i get some word i use again one of the other rules it becomes some other word etc etc till i finally am able to reach x1 okay this is what it means to say w1 and x1 are equivalent to each other okay similarly i have w2 and x2 so i can start at w2 i can follow my rules successively till i reach well okay so that's what the definition says now given this we need to show that if i start with w1 star w2 i can reach x1 star x2 by means of my basic rewriting rules okay now the way we do this is just via this simple observation that look at this this initial uh, chain starting from w1 and going to x1 what is a basic rewriting rule do the basic rewriting rule has the following form so for instance if this is my word w1 i look through the letters in w1 i either find a successive pair of the form a a prime etc which i delete or i take my word w1 i look through the letters i pick some position and there i insert a pair a a prime okay so the transformation that i perform has this very specific form you either collapse or you sort of expand at a certain location in in the word so if 
if I go from let us look at the very first step of the chain I go from w1 to whatever is the next word in the sequence by means of some basic rewriting rule then here is what it means it means that look at w1 and the next guy now to w1 on the right hand side I can con uh, let me try doing this let me concatenate w1 on the right hand side with the word w2 okay and the next step in the chain I will do the same thing to it I concatenate w2 to that word now if this second guy can be obtained from the first one by some basic rewriting rule then it follows that w1 star w2 will lead to that word star w2 okay I can take the second guy and I, I do w2 to it so maybe I should give this give this a name so this intermediate step suppose I call it z1 that is my word then here is what I mean that if from w1 to z1 I can go by means of a basic rewriting rule I can also go from w1 star w2 to z1 star w2 by by the same rule really okay because I only need to apply that rule to the w1 portion of my word now and so on so the next step again because I can go from z1 to the next fellow z2 by means of some rule it means I can also go from z1 star w2 to z2 star w2 by using the same rule but only applying it to the z1 portion and so on okay so keep doing this till you reach the end so the end here is x1 but of course remember I have starred every one of them with the w2 okay so I, I, I've started at w1 star w2 which is what I need to start with Okay, so we have managed to go from w1 star w2 which is what we wanted but we have only reached x1 star w2 okay but uh, that's already a very good start because now we do the same thing with the with the other sequence we know that we can start at w2 and reach x1 so now let's do the same thing here this implies now i will sort of concatenate on the left of w2 so starting at at w2 I can reach the next step uh, whatever this this word is so let us call this z1 dash now what I do is to concatenate x1 on the left of w2 and because I can go from w2 to z1 dash it also implies that I can go from x1 star w2 to x1 star uh, z1 dash in the same manner and you know by the same logic as before so I keep applying it to the next um, to the next step of the chain and so on so I keep doing this till I reach the very last step and the last step is x2 but concatenated on the left by x1 okay so what this means is if I start at x1 star w2 by applying left uh, concatenation to the second chain I can reach x1 star x2 so now I just put these put these together so what have I managed to do I have managed to start at w1 star w2 I am following this chain of rewriting rules so at this point this and this are the same now I follow after that this chain of rules and finally I reach my destination okay so what this means is that w1 star w2 is in fact equivalent to x1 star x2 okay as required so what this means is that my uh, on my group G or at the moment my set G the um, uh, binary operation that have defined is at least it, it makes sense it is well defined okay but uh, we called it G for a reason we are going to make this into a group we are going to show that it actually becomes a group under this operation and that is really our, our in some sense our main theorem that is going to be the free group so G is a group under the binary operation that we just defined okay proof well what all do we need to show we need to show that the binary operation is associative okay why is it associative so we will show that first uh, observe the definition said if I take w1 multiplied by w2 okay let us just write out the definition of associativity here this by definition is 
uh, W1 star W2, the equivalence class of the concatenation multiplied by the equivalence class of W3, okay, which by definition again is the equivalence class of W1 star W2 star W3. Okay. But observe that the what is inside the representative of the class that I get here is just the concatenation of these three guys W1, W2 and W3 and the concatenation operation is of course associative. So, I can replace this triple with uh, say W1 star W2, W3 and that by the definition of the multiplication in G will just become this product okay? and that is exactly the, the verification of associativity. Okay, now, the identity is also easy. So, there is an identity element. Uh, what should the identity element be? Well, so let us call it uh, uh, E maybe the identity element of this group G. Well, I claim it is nothing but you take the equivalence class of the empty word. Okay, so, that is the, the empty word in words of S hat. The equivalence class of the empty word, by the way, is, uh, it has lots and lots of words, remember, right? So, we um, looked at A, A, for example, A, A prime, A, A prime A, those basic rewriting guys, they are all in fact in the equivalence class of the empty word. So, this is in fact the set of all words which if you keep applying rewriting rules will finally come down to the empty word. The claim is that that serves as an identity, again, by definition, because the multiplication just says for any word E, if I multiply it with the equivalence class of the empty word, I just have to concatenate W with the empty word, but that is just W. Okay? And observe the same logic holds with in the other order. If I hit the equivalence class of the empty word with W on the right, then of course, it gives me W. Okay? So, in some sense, these two properties just follow from the corresponding properties of the star operation. So, no surprises so far, but the reason we were doing all this is because the star does not admit inverses. Okay? But the important property here is that this does have inverses. Okay? In other words, it is a group. So, let us verify this. Let us check that given any element of G, I can construct an inverse of that element with respect to this, this new operation that I have defined. So, for a start, let us let us just look at the, the two basic generators A and B, the alphabets. Um, if I just take the single, uh, if I take the equivalence class of the, the word A, the question is what is the inverse of this guy? So, in other words, what equivalence class will you take such that, uh, you know, what should I put here? So, that this product gives me the identity element and remember the identity element just means it is the equivalence class of the empty word. Okay? And observe that, well, by definition, uh, we already know something. So, let us just throw that in. Let us let us perform a simple computation here. So, observe if I take A and I multiply it with the equivalence class of the element A prime, then by definition, this is the equivalence class of the concatenation, the word A with A prime, which again by definition is just A A prime, the word of length 2. But remember, A A prime by the rewriting rule is the same as the empty word. Okay? So, in other words, it says that uh, A equivalence class multiplied by the equivalence class of A prime is in fact the identity element of this group. Okay? And of course, in the other order as well, A prime multiplied by A would also give you identity. You know, you can also check that the same is true of B and B prime. So, this is what I meant when I said in the beginning that, you know, A prime and B prime will eventually perform the roles of the, the inverses. Okay, that is only, we have only constructed inverses for these special one letter words if you wish. Uh, what about a general word? That is also very easy. So, let us just do it by example and you will see the general picture very quickly. Suppose I take the word W equals 
uh, a b b a for example okay so the question is what should the inverse so, so maybe i should make it slightly asymmetric so let me put two a's on the end so a b b a a for example okay so take this word w i want to know what is the inverse of this this word okay so i claim here's a simple prescription you just look at this this string of letters you read them in reverse okay and when you read them in reverse you you just change all the a a's to a primes and b's to b primes so here's the prescription uh, the inverse of w so let me call it w bar for now this is just read w in reverse and replace uh, any any symbol that you see by its dash okay so maybe i should call it replace each letter by its dash okay so in other words here i i apply this prescription i read this in reverse and i see two a's from the end so i ma make them dashes i make b's into dashes so here's my claim is that this this new word will serve as the inverse so let us check so how should we check by definition mm -hmm. this product is just w concatenated with this new word a prime a prime b prime b prime a prime which as we know is a b b a a a prime a prime b prime b prime a prime so here's some some long word but i claim that if i keep applying my rewriting rules successively i can convert this word into the the empty word okay so let's just do this sort of uh, right there so let me write down this this word and i'll convert it into the the empty word so a b b a a a dash a dash b dash b dash a dash okay so let's just do it right uh, right there so i have this pair a and a prime right over here so i know that that pair can be erased i can make it into the identity into the empty word so i erase that from my word okay now i look at what's left now again in what's left i see that an a and an a dash are paired up so i can erase them okay now i look at what's left i see that this b and this b dash are paired up so i erase them okay and what's left the b and this b dash are paired up this a and this a dash are paired up okay so you see that's exactly how we we constructed the inverse we just read the word in reverse and for every symbol we just took its its dash okay and the reason for doing this is because exactly this sort of pairwise cancellation is going to happen and in fact this this was just a particular example uh, but more generally the word can have um, dashes as well okay so here's the maybe a, here's another example so if i have a b a dash a for example then i claim that the inverse of that equivalence class is just read the same thing in reverse but put dashes if you see a put it put an a dash if you see an a dash you convert that to an a so that's it's in some sense uh, a dash dash is like an a so i claim it's this element okay and i leave this for you to check okay and it's easy to write a general prescription as well if you wish that if w is a word which looks like x1 x2 xk each xi is a letter it's either a b a dash or b dash then the inverse of w is just given by the equivalence class of well read it in reverse so y k and i change all the x's to y's where what is y i is just the dash of x i okay so just being a bit loose here but you you know what i mean each xi if it's an a then yi is a dash if it's a dash then it is an a okay 
So, what have we done? Uh, we have therefore proved that this group, so finally we have managed to do what we set out to do. We have constructed a group G uh, with respect to this, this binary operation. So, G with respect to this binary operation is called, so it's definition, this is called the free group on the two symbols A and B. Okay? So, observe it is, um, it certainly contains in some sense the elements A and B and uh, next time we will start looking at some of its other properties. Okay? For now, uh, at least the the motivation for this this terminology, I mean it is not yet fully clear, but we at least said let us start with A and B, let us not put any relations, uh, just sort of let A and B be arbitrary symbols, let them generate look at all possible products and so on. And in some sense what we did by this enlargement procedure is to say let us not just take products of A's and B's, let us sort of also take their inverses, let us also throw in two formal symbols which are like the inverses of A and B and sort of take all possible products, all words with A in which A's, B's, A inverses and B inverses occur. Okay? And in some sense that is really what the, what the free group is capturing. Okay. So, more on this next time.